Hi everyone, this is Dr. Peggy Simmingson. My ideas are short and sweet and they are about how to teach online during an emergency crisis or shutdown. These are big ideas, so you'll need to explore them further and think about how they apply to your situation. They're also my opinion and not those of my employer. This video focuses on mobile learning apps that are useful to learning for you and your students. So step one, I'm gonna talk specifically about two tools Canvas apps and Microsoft Teams. I'll tell you what they are and how they're useful and in the mobile version. So first of all, there are two versions of the Canvas mobile app. The first one is Canvas Teacher, and that's gonna be useful to you because you can push out announcements using Canvas Teacher. It's a little bit limited um, in terms of you're not gonna be able to do everything that's on the desktop version, so of the web-based version, um, but you are gonna be able to do certain things. And so I recommend downloading for yourself Canvas Teacher. You can also grade through the mobile app. So if you're away from your keyboard or computer, you will be able to access that application or tool. Now for your students, this is actually more useful for them because they're able to take quizzes using Canvas Student. So the app you want to refer them to is Canvas Student and they may already be using it. So Canvas Student will allow them to view content. It'll allow them to um, view their grades. They can message you through the email inbox, which I forgot to add. With Canvas Teacher, you'll be able to access the email inbox. And so Canvas has its own email inbox um, that you can communicate with and you can send messages to the class that way too. So from a messaging perspective and a pushing out of information perspective, Canvas Teacher and Canvas Student are really useful. And I would let your class know that you intend to employ, employ those um, if you're not already doing so. Okay, so those are two apps you can explore. And again, I'm just mentioning them. You're gonna need to Google around to find out further information about what these apps can and cannot do. And then next I'm gonna talk about Microsoft Teams. And so Microsoft Teams does have a mobile app. I'll tell you how I use it. So you can set up Teams, you can set one up for your class and um, use it as a, an asynchronous or non-real-time back channel. And I do this now. And so I send out reminders to students about things. They can ask questions. It's kind of just a steady stream of posts that are visible to everyone in the class. So it's public to your class, but it's private, meaning only your class can see it. So I set mine up as a class back channel. You can also use the chat tool so students can write you a message one-on-one -on -one through the chat feature and you can reply there. So that's just another way for students to reach you. You may not want to use that feature, but I find it useful. It's just one more way for students to contact me and then I can be pretty responsive by using the chat feature. Those are the two main things I use it for. I also connect to colleagues using chat and Teams. So it has um, faculty to faculty functions. You can be in a larger group as well with faculty and staff talking about a shared issue or topic. So I find this extremely useful for communications. On the Teams back channel, in my class teams, you can also do a lot of multimedia. So you can use the YouTube app and find videos to post there. You can do polls. It's a lot of interactivity. So if you're doing sort of non-credit assignments or tasks to engage your students, that's a great way to do it. So I've used this as a virtual exit ticket at the end of class in my face-to-face. -face. So you might have them post something on there for, you know, if you decide to make it worth points. Finally, with Teams, you can set up real-time meetings, and I'll talk more about that when I get to my synchronous video, but it's useful for, let's say, three reasons. So let's say a student is chatting with you and says, I really need to talk to you. You can turn that chat into a one-on-one -on -one virtual video conference in real time and have a video conference, and they don't have to use their video, but you can, and it just adds a level of personalization instead of just text-based chat. Um, you can also set up scheduled webinars with your class and host those through your Teams back channel. And third, you can do virtual office hours through your Teams back channel. 
Now you may say, I don't need to use Teams, I have Canvas, that's fine. But for me, Teams just adds another alternative. For example, if something's not available in Canvas, I can use it in Teams. I like the multimedia interactivity I can do in the Teams back channel. Also, um, there are other Microsoft Office apps you can download like for your own organizational purposes like OneDrive um, and everything that's in that Microsoft suite. It just depends on how effective you are and how skilled you are at using your phone for productivity. Some people like to use Zoom when talking to their colleagues. I've used Zoom to collaborate with colleagues around the globe. I have the Zoom app as another way to, to engage. And then of course, you know, there are many other apps you can use. Those are some of the main ones. Thanks a lot.